Hello, good evening, and welcome to Game On here on New Central Television. My name is Baba Tunde Kweki. Warm welcomes uh, to you from anywhere you are watching us from across the world. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. It's a great night to talk sports. Of course, the UEFA Champions League is currently going on. Your favorite teams are in action, somewhere in action yesterday night, and uh, we'll be talking about those encounters later on in the show. And of course, we're still so ecstatic here in Nigeria regarding the fact that for the first time in 16 years, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will be at the Olympic Games. And that just is pretty heartwarming considering the fact that the Tigresses, that's the national women's basketball team of Nigeria, have already qualified for the Olympics. That gives us two re great reasons already to watch the Olympic Games. Well, you call it a wonderful Wednesday night. We just call it Game On. Welcome to the show again. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Don't forget, we're also streaming live on YouTube and, of course, on our social media handles as well. You can already see the handle there on your screen. That's at News Central TV. I'm not doing the show alone. I have two great people with me in the studio. And, of course, ladies first, Oyechi Obaro also makes another return. Thank you so much, Oye. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. A pleasure to be sitting here. Uh, and I know, I know for a matter of fact that you are probably happier than both of us yes, regarding of the fact that we have the Falcons. We have the Tigers, we don't have the, the Tigers, <laughs> we don't have any on the 23 national team. You can rub Same it in, you. you are well within your rights to do so. I've got on my shoulder. Oh <laughs> God, oh God. See, see what you've caused, you guys. You, it's, yeah, you see what you've caused. It's, it's unfortunate. But great to have her on the show because we'll be looking at uh, women's uh, sport in detail of, in this show as well. And of course, uh, he makes a return as well, the deputy editor of Sporting Life, Niger, one of Nigeria's finest publications. Uh, talk about none other than Oyewuchi Wanchuku, thank you so much. Looking very dapper tonight. Uh, I know it's a public holiday in Nigeria, but did, did you go somewhere else that um, you want to tell us about? No, 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 I don't want you guys to run me at no, all. No, 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 <laughs> nobody's I'm, running. I'm, I'm still in my prime. You're yeah, still in your prime. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm still hot. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, still in circulation. <laughs> okay. So, so, I but, but, but I think the, the future of um, sports is feminine. You know, we, they've always said yeah, that. So when know. people say that, I always, I, I'm, I'm always, but, 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 I'm always question: Is it that in the future there will be no male sports, there will only be women's sports? No, but from what you see now, you'll be able to predict the future. At the African Games, more women won medals for us. At the Commonwealth, at the, at the Commonwealth Games, okay. the F Super Falcons have won the African Women uh, Cup of Nations nine times. Mm. You know, the men have already, <laughs> already they, they won three times. You know, so why you say the future? It's, it's in the public but, but domain. Let us put this in it's perspective. In the is, it, is it that the future of sports in Nigeria is feminine or it's global? Yeah, well, I think it's, I think it's about uh, Nigeria. I think yeah, it's, it's about, about Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, because, because, you see, the, 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 the issue is that the men have a lot of responsibilities. Ah, uh, you know, so you know, they're so, being distracted. Yes, they're being distracted. <laughs> because um, Elizabeth, I mean, um, uh, uh -huh. Anacho, Anacho, the, okay. Our um, gold medalist in Taekwondo, mm. uh, you know, I asked the president and some of the officials, and they said the father has been very helpful. Mm. You understand? And you know, she's she's a woman. She needs support. You know, so the father, the parents. What do you mean by she's a woman? She needs. I don't men need support as well? Yeah, men need support, but you see, you know, the general has also. I remember uh, Chuka no, Berije, the the youngster who was also an excellent. Uh, uh, Chuka uh, Berije, his father used to be a minister. Yes. In the Federal Republic. Okay. And, um, they have the resources, a man of means. So, you know, so his, his own is an, in, in an isolated case. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are talking of other sportsmen and women who don't have such privilege mm. to have parents who are Support. you know, supportive, who have the means. It's not about even supporting. If, if you have to support, you have to have the resources to support. So Chuku Merije had a father, you know, in his own recent who is who's late now, who supported him. You know, so it's a different case. Okay. We have a lot of sportsmen and women who on their own, especially the men, mm. You, you are the breadwinner. Um, you are, you are but women are breadwinners. Women? women are breadwinners. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you they know are, mothers? Mothers are. also are competing in. Yes, they are. Yeah, yeah, women are breadwinners. Yes, they are. There are women who are breadwinners. Yeah, they are. They, they are. Who are they, acting really. like fathers, you know? Taking mothers care of the children, well. acting yes. like mothers, you know, taking the responsibilities. But, but you, know, you know, the fact is that if I have two children in the university, a daughter and a son, I'll probably give the daughter more money. Why? 
because what happened to equality? No, 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 that's, that's not. That's <laughs> not, that's not that's that's that no, let's go that rabbit hole. But we talk about let's leave family issues aside and let's talk sports now. But I with you what you talked about something very interesting about how having parental support in the pursuit of one's sporting dreams is very, very key. And this particular athlete is also uh, not uh, lacking parental support. I'm talking about Khadija Mohammed, who is a tennis player and who is doing quite well for herself. Well, she's uh, uh, she's also set her sights on breaking Coco Golf's record as she emulates her. Uh, well, she's pretty much displaying her skill and diligence on court. Uh, the number one seeded player at the ongoing National Tennis Juniors Tournament in Lagos said that Coco Golf of the United States is her mentor and role model. And the Abuja-based young tennis star also stated that she's planning to work hard to get into the International Tennis Federation rankings. Now, I, I think she's picked a particularly interesting uh, role model, uh, an African-American, someone who looks like her. Uh, she could have gone for any of the Williams sisters, but Coco Golf, another great American uh, athlete who's also won a Grand Slam as well, one of the top players on the WTA tour as well. And it's always a confusing day <laughs> when I have Onye Uchi and Onye on the show. So please bear with me. Onye, it's always very interesting to see that tennis requires probably more support than usual. We know the likes of um, uh, Onye Noma, Onye Noma okay. Bakari as well, mm -hmm. uh, the few others who, who require tremendous amount of support. But the facilities, the kind of support uh, that they require it's not readily found here in Nigeria, which means that they might have to look at the place like South Africa, which is closest, mm -hmm. or maybe the uh, IMG Academy in Florida, which is which costs a pretty penny. It's not an easy thing to have to raise a tennis player from scratch. Yes, yeah, not really an easy thing because tennis is not one of those sports that people embrace here in Nigeria. But it's uh, little step, baby steps. We can take baby steps in developing tennis in Nigeria. I remember how the tennis girls they were able to pick a medal. Uh, this just concluded yeah, African yeah, Games, yeah. you know, Oin Lomo, Quadri, uh, Edwards, Mary Love, mm. they've been doing wonderfully well. Yes, she has taken a role model as Kuku Curry Goff. You said she didn't pick um, Serena Williams and all. She might have not been born when, you know, the glory days of Serena and Venus Williams were. But she at least could see Kuku Curry Goff. I'm hoping that um, with this kind of interest from this little girl, Mohammed Khadijat, the Tennis Federation will get the support they need, even coming from what the girls did at the African Games that can boost the interest in developing the sport in here in Nigeria. We're, we're seeing competitions that brought out the likes of Oinlomo Quadri. Yeah. Um, there are some sponsored competitions in Lagos where we see these tennis players come out to practice, but not the same facilities they use over there. Oinlomo had to travel to go for schooling yeah. and now playing collegiate tennis, which she's developing in, and we can see that at the African Games. So maybe the interest of this little girl and more students, if they can come in in schools, teach children, buy them rackets so they can use to practice for this sport, then maybe the Tennis Federation can get this support, this big motivation they need to develop the sport. Mm. Well, oh, oh, yeah, uh, you have to look at tennis uh, as a sport itself. Some people, people say that they probably put it in the same bracket as the likes of polo. Uh, and golf, that's it's an elite sport, and I'm wondering why. Yeah, um, it it is is quite capital intensive, okay. you know. Um, it's good to capture them at this young age, like um, this athlete is doing. And um, if you if you have read the stories of Maria Sharapova, the lives of Anna Konnikova, and the rest, you know, they left for Sharapova. She left Russia with her father. In fact, as a matter of fact, the father had to sell a lot of things to be able to take her to the United States, where he, she got enrolled in academy, and from there, she rose to the ranks. So it requires um, a lot of investment. And I don't think um, the Nigerian Tennis Federation is ready for that kind of investment. Because yeah, I know how much you get. private individuals. Yes, we have. Godwin Kienka. Remember yeah. Godwin Kienka? You know, but uh, the, the issue tennis is, player, he also, I think he started an academy yeah, of sorts. Yeah, the, the issue is, you know, capturing them at that very young age. Because tennis is energy sapping. It's not like a team sport. Sometimes they play tennis for three, four hours, and you require a lot of training, expertise, you know, going through the academies and exposure at that level. So if, if we want to get, you know, the last time we got to the Grand Slam, I think it was during um, the period of Nduka and, um, you know, the, the rest, and they, they got to the Grand Slam. Since that time, we have not um, had any, any tennis player get to the Grand Slam. So it's time we begin to you know, put on our thinking caps and capture them. It's not for old people. 
you have to get those players at a very young age so that they continue to acquire the expertise, the know-how, they continue to grow to ranks, playing mm. amongst the best in the world. And it's, it's not... The, the later uh, she tell you did say that in order to be a, um, a Grand Slam champion, you need to have picked up the racket by as early as the age of six. Absolutely. And that's what maybe we really need to be doing here in absolutely. Nigeria in terms of... Put, catch them young. Catch that's them what they call really. it. Mm. And um, if now that this little girl has got the interest and other little ones who've got the interest in tennis, I think this is a good time to catch them young, to imbibe them this dream of having to break going to the grand slams mm. i see south africans doing that with their tennis players even tunisia is on jabor she has yeah. like an academy in tunisia mm. to encourage you know students to go into playing tennis but they need as he says it's capital capital intensive you incentive i mean you need the capital you need only clubs country clubs here in lagos you know have courts where children Mm. Exactly. So that's what I'm Can't thinking. That's train. what I'm saying. The name is an elitist sport mm. because Facilities. these the, the best courts in this country are behind the closed doors yes. of um, social clubs. clubs you know, yeah. and, and that's why many of these athletes uh, who are not from the Rich families show. with means, mm -hmm. they but, cannot but, get to but, train. But sometimes mm. you can convince the elites if you are sincere, if you are transparent. Mm. I think the elites just want you to show them that <laughs> you are not going to, they are not pumping money into a bottomless pit. Mm. Mm. Their, their, their money will be well spent. You know, if you are able to convince them, they'll put in money. Mm. Well, we'll, see, we'll definitely see how that pans out, but uh, of course it's evident that the tennis authorities in this country really have a lot to do in terms of changing the game. I mean, it's been almost it's been almost three decades now that we had a Nigerian uh, compete. I think over three decades actually, I had a Nigerian compete at the Grand Slams, and so something really needs to be done uh, in order to change the fortune of tennis in Nigeria. And a lot of other so-called lesser sports, rugby for instance, where a country like Nigeria has not even featured in the Rugby Sevens, not even talk of the Rugby World Cup itself, a lot still needs to be done uh, in those regards. Let's uh, move on now and talk about the Olympic Games where the game has changed for the better. Now from this Olympic Games onwards, uh, the athletics, uh, world athletics will pay a uh, princely sum to winners of gold medals in the athletics events. Now we've been told that uh, each uh, team, uh, well each athlete will win $50,000 if they Get a gold? If they get a gold medal at uh, the Olympic Games. So it's going to be very, very interesting, guys, to see how this pans out. Yes, very interesting. If federations can give uh, gold medalists or medal winning athletes, can give them money after they finish up with um, competitions, why shouldn't um, the World Athletics do so too? Mm. Uh, but this is just the first step. It's only for gold medalists. Only for gold medalists. For the silver and bronze medalists, we're told from Los Angeles 2028, 2028 yes. it will begin. Um, Sebastian Coe has taken a great step here, none that any other federation have been, international federation, have been able to do. And I think it's a good step in the right direction because we've seen these athletes only get um, 70,000 US dollars mm. if they win gold. Second position, nothing. Third position, nothing. But when you see international competition, international needs from the World Athletics, even to the eighth position yeah. gets five thousand US some kind dollars. Of appearance fee. Yeah, exactly. Get an appearance fee, but not at the Olympics. And I remember that Sebastian Coe also, he has been there, he has done that. He won an uh, from a, Yes, and he knows the plight of these athletes. He knows that yes, they need to get something for representing their country at the Olympics. Mm. Well, it's very interesting, considering the fact that this might actually force other federations to start doing the same. Yeah, I, I think it's, um, it's a step in the right direction because mm. the athletes are the main characters. And it's already happening in FIFA because um, during the World Cup, federations, I mean, the qualified teams, usually agree with the players on uh, you know, the amount of money they're going to earn. Mm. If they, if, if they uh, go through the group stage, uh, the second round, the quarterfinal, the semi-final, they agree on certain amounts because money is coming from FIFA. Mm. And the Federation alone cannot share the money. Mm. You know, so this, this money is about 2.4 million yeah. from the IOC. So I think it's um, quite uh, logical that the athletes, the main characters, should get the money. Mm. And this will also help you know, some of um, you know, the, maybe the developing world. You can promise your athletes, you know, even get a loan, you, 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 can, you can make it and win a gold medal. You get fifty thousand dollars. It's a lot of money. No, it's <laughs> yeah, I didn't get the, that, you, you say that. Who should get the loan? The athletes or the no, federation? The, the, the federation and the athletes can. After all, 
Um, I think after the Commonwealth Games, Toby Lola Mosso mm. revealed that she got a loan to train. And she was able to make it. You know, after winning. After winning the medals, she was able to raise a lot of money and pay back the loan. Hmm. You know, so if you get a loan to for investment, not to organize a party or a jamboree, if you get a loan because you feel you have the potential, you have the opportunity of getting fifty thousand dollars, then I think it's worth it. But there are no guarantees that you are going to win that medal. No, 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 they are, None they, whatsoever. There are, are no guarantees in life, but you have to make that that move. Take a risk. Mm. That was but the risk. question is: Will this now force? Especially if you have the potential. Mm. But will this now Other force the national federation to take exactly. that step? Yeah, I'm, I'm bothered about continuity, Tunde. Mm. I am bothered about that because he says that he's going to get the money from what the IOC gives to the World Athletics. You know, to keep the, the, the International Federation at bay. Mm. But the truth about it is continuity. After Sebastian Coe, what happens if other federations do not take a leap from what he has done right now? Well, if it, is, a, if it is, maybe it now becomes part of the Olympic Charter, whereby mm. every single gold medalist gets, uh, gets um, amount. Uh, a certain amount. It doesn't necessarily have to be $50,000. It could be even be more yeah. for certain sports. Mm. But if that now becomes a standard for the Olympics, doesn't it serve, serve to increase the level of competition that we might begin to see? So the, 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 let's not um, pontificate or summonize. Money rules the world, <laughs> you know. So if the athletes, you know, realizes that um, realize that they can make more money, they are going to there'll be more interest. Yes, there'll, there'll be, be more interest, interest into the. You world. can get physiotherapists. You can get nutritionists. <laughs> you can get all the personnel yeah. that you Training. need. You know, mm. the support system yeah. to ensure you get to that level. So. Mm. It is going to increase the level of uh, competitiveness. Okay. You know, no doubt about that. Yeah, because according to what we heard, uh, this will be used to reward athletes who win a gold medal in each of the 48 athletics events in Paris. Uh, the payment of the prize money will depend on the World Athletics ratification process, and the remaining two athletes get undergoing get and clearing mm -hmm. usual anti-doping procedures. That means the money will only be paid after you've you have scaled the anti-doping anti uh, procedures. Okay. And even, like you rightly said, uh, even relay teams uh, will also receive the same amount. So mm. I want to, to know, shared. is it 50,000 each or 50,000 for no, 50, no, for the relay team? To be shared. Okay, okay, so yeah. all, all four members? Yes, yeah. to okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we'll see how that will pan well, out. Because sometimes the relay, members of the relay team mm. too, could be could compete in the 200 meters, yeah, 100 event, meters. So yeah. you can imagine if you win gold medal in 100 meters <laughs> and you are still part of the relay team. Uh, it's all about it. I mean, I mean, you just be cashing out at the Olympic <laughs> Games. Yeah. So let's uh, move on and uh, just give this interesting piece of news from the Olympic Games. Uh, just ahead of the start of the tournament itself, uh, a lot of, uh, do I say, interesting events are currently going on. And one happened recently in Paris where a climber, uh, a French world champion athlete, has been climbing one of the most famous landmarks in the world. I'm talking about the Eiffel Tower. Mm. Uh, on Wednesday, that was today, Anouk Garnier, an obstacle course world champion and Olympic torchbearer, attempted to break the world record for the greatest height climbed by rope and she showed off her, her incredible strength by climbing a rope uh, with a rope all the way to the second floor of the Eiffel Tower hmm. which is 110 meters that's around 361 feet above the ground uh, that's the same height as nearly 24 double decker buses stacked on top of each other wow. and speaking after the climb uh, Garnier said I visualized this moment so much worked so hard for a year to get here and I can't believe it's really happened and she admitted that around 80 meters climbing it started to hurt a lot but she managed it really well uh, but she would need to wait a bit to find out if she broke the rope climbing world record uh, but she has plenty to look forward to at this year's olympic games where she's also set to be a torch bearer uh, in the relay so guys it's it's interesting that ahead of the olympic games we always see these novelties um in, at, at different events as well but this one this one is very interesting i, I don't think i can climb the no. the height of this of, of this okay. building but she's climbed 361 feet above ground you said how many deckers of uh, that's 24 double deckers oh london word. double decker london buses stacked on top of each other oh my word this it's, is it's, it's no mean feat mm. it's no mean feat at all well um <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure when, if when the olympic games does come to nigeria you, pl you plan to do something spectacular as well well if there is money involved a lot of money involved <laughs> then i can do it because why must you always involve money it has to be money money rules the world, money rules the world. That's, 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 because, how can you take such a risk it's an unassured risk yes yeah. you know how can you take such a risk if you don't have and she doesn't you know, even know if she has broken the record you know? exactly so you know she doesn't know yet maybe 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 because it's um in europe where um, sometimes they are bored, you know. I feel bored. You think yeah, they are bored? I think they are bored because I don't. You know, we 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 have a lot of problems here. We have a lot of basic issues to tackle. 
government has settled some of the problems they have. But, but how can somebody? You know, but, but I'm saying it, you know, you know, dispassionately. Mm. How can you? You know, when you <laughs> even mute the idea that you want to start climbing, people will you know, raise alarm. You know, your 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 kinsmen. I said, I think something is wrong. Maybe with your village people are. Yes. but it's not the first time in France. We, we do remember that uh, incident of the the Malian immigrant who climbed a building to save a baby. And uh, I think wow. he was given French citizenship. Yeah. Uh, I think he climbed almost yeah, the But a lot of people have, have, you know, put their and lives on the reason. line. Yes, yeah. that's for a reason. Put their lives on the line. Even here, mm. people have put their lives on the line to save human beings. Mm. But that's different. But, yes. you know, to start climbing uh, the Eiffel Tower is something quite mind-blowing. And well, it's quite commendable. It's a lot of bravery and It's courage. a lot of bravery. Yeah. And uh, Miss Garnier uh, is now, has obviously made a name for herself. But we'll be w watching very closely to find out she has broken the world record uh, for that particular event. But still talking about the Olympics as well, we heard that the triathlon might have a small issue. Now, if you know about the triathlon, it involves three events, cycling, uh, long distance running, and swimming as well. Now, the swimming event might be under threat because we hear that the quality of the water in the River Seine uh, is uh, pretty uh, iffy, as it were. Uh, this summer's Olympic Games could be cancelled if heavy rain affects water quality in the Seine. According to recent testing by a charity, uh, a charity known as Soft Rider Foundation, uh, they found that alarming levels of E. coli uh, in, the, in the river. And Estangier said that contingency plans are in place, including delaying the event until later in the Games. Uh, we hear heavy rain in the days leading up to the events could lay, raise levels of bacteria uh, in the water. And organizers say that about 1.4 billion euros is being spent on regeneration project to make the Seine safe to swim in, including a rainwater storage basin to, dry, to try and reduce uh, the risk of pollution. Now, this, this is very interesting because they're making sure that the athletes who compete in these events are also safe as well. There are some issues in, in, in France. Uh, uh, a lot of people might not know it, but France has also been figured to have a bed bug infestation. It's Believe it or not, it's 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 terrible. Mm. But surprisingly, they've kept it on the wraps. They've been trying to deal with it, and now this particular one as well. Uh, it seems that this um, this this Olympics they seem to be under threat from different different. Uh, do I say the different uh, part, parts uh, of, of society if it's not um uh, do i say terrorist threat oh, islamic yeah um, terrorist threat mm -hmm. is now possibility of uh, raised bacteria levels in the in the so in the awesome. sand it's not looking good and also there's the, also the backboard investigation i mentioned so there are every olympics every world cup has always been under threat mm. when brazil hosted the olympic games you know um, some civil rights organization um labor union you know threatened to stop the Olympic Games said, why should they spend, you know, such humongous amount of money on organizing the Olympic Games and all that? You know, at the time, we are even apprehensive whether the Olympic Games will go ahead or not. But it, um, it, 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 it ran and ended. Mm. You know, so there are internal issues everywhere. In the U.S., in Europe, you know, there are internal issues. People will always raise concerns, you know, about um, why should we spend so much money? But, you know, immediately it starts. It, it, it will run seamlessly. Mm. That's always the issue. You know, the issue of water, and you know, I, I, I quite understand the concerns read about equally. These are terrible viruses here and there, but uh, I think the fact that they have been able to identify that they are doing their best to deal with it, is, you know, to deal with it, they have already, you know, even given the option of starting later, you know, and uh, if the rains, if the water level increases, you know, they are, they are concerned. So, it, what it means is that they've been able to, you know, identify that the problem, and they, they are you know, working towards the solution. I'm yeah. happy also yeah. that they were able to identify this on time, because mm. I remember the Commonwealth Games, the aquatic event, had to be on hold for a very long time, and they had these aquatic, um, some, not wild ones, but they had, they had been stung by some, you know, mm. yeah, you know, aquatic animals. Mm. So, I mean, it's good that this is being done earlier, before the Games start, you mm. know giving them a full hand of information so we know that at this time this will not be done because of this. Okay. Just to, so just they can to deal with the, it. the athletes. Well, I just thought that one day, if we do decide to host the Olympic Games or the Commonwealth Games uh, in Lagos, they're going to have to do a lot of work <laughs> in terms of testing the water in the Lagos Lagoon, that's for sure. Uh, but uh, moving on, let's uh, talk some boxing now. And this man is talking tough. Mm. I'm talking about none other than Tyson Fury, uh, reigning WBC heavyweight champion of the world. He's been speaking in the recent conf uh, press conference in his home city of Morecambe uh, to uh, Alexander. 
Alexander Yusik, and he's saying that he, uh, Yusik, his opponent, is too small to compete with him in the undisputed heavyweight world title fight. Now, he's not talking about being too small in terms of uh, ability. He's saying he's too small in size. And according to Fury, he says, uh, you know, he's a cruiserweight, and he will be found wanting on the 18th of May in Riyadh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Former undisputed champion at cruiserweight, Yusik actually defeated Anthony Joshua to become unified heavyweight champion in 2021. He also defeated him again, uh, that's twice, in, uh, in his first title defense. And he's basically, Fury, Fury is saying that, look, cruiserweights have no business in the heavyweight division. But that's not particularly true because we've seen cruiserweights move to the heavyweight division and become champion. And we've seen uh, David Hay, uh, we've seen Evander Holyfield, they were cruiserweights who moved up, up and they're saying, uh, and so it, there's, a, there's a precedence of cruiserweights becoming world champion. But oh yeah, I'm just seeing that, is this mind games on the part of Fury? Because it's mind games, mm, and I'm absolutely. hoping that Fury will not postpone this bout again. Because well, yes, this, the first time he said well, he suffered the cut in training, yes. Mm -hmm. The truth is, he even said more. He said he can take 15 bottles of um, beer and beat Alexander oh, Usyk. He's talking tough. He's just mind games mm. against Usyk. But the surprising thing is, when we get to that four square rope on May 18, I know I would see the biggest surprise ever. Oh, wow. Against, wait, wait, against hold, hold on, hold on. You, you, you're seeing, if I get you correctly, you're mm. seeing that Alexander Usyk will upset. This was the same That's way the Fury. Fury went about talking when he wanted to face up with Francis um, Ngannou. Francis Ngannou mm. And we saw what happened. It was just a little... Just because um, the World Bucks want to save their face, mm. that's why they gave that but, to But Francis Fury. Ngannou was, uh, was, was an MMA star. I mean, he, the threat that Alexander Yusik possesses is real, it's genuine. He defeated Anthony Joshua twice. Mm. He's also fought heavyweights the likes of Daniel Dubois. Unified uh, the, the middle, the cruiserweight. Cruiserweight I mean. division. So he's a genuine boxer. He's not an MMA star who just happened to find his way into boxing. He has more belts than um, um, Dan Dan Fury. Tyson Fury. Mm. And the fact that uh, Francis Ngannou gave Tyson Fury a hell of a fight. Mm. You know, he was even knocked out. Mm. Um, it was he had to rely on a split decision. It was not even unanimous. Mm. You know, it was two to one. So it shows that uh, the, what Fury is doing is just you know absolutely mind games. And uh, maybe he's trying to psych himself up. <laughs> I mean, Usyk is a, is the real deal, mm. and he's going to give him a hell of a fight. So well, maybe he's just trying to get himself motivated and yeah. all that. You know, before you know the last the, you know they postponed the, the the last fight. Yes, because, I saw part of the video where his sparring partner. Literally dealt with him, <laughs> you know. So it's just mind That's game. That's you got the court. Yeah, got the court. It's just mind game, and uh, let's see what is going to happen. But I know that Usyk will give him the real deal. It's going to be a big fight. Mm. Well, I'm I'm definitely sure that um, Tyson Fury will definitely not be uh, underestimating uh, um, Ta Alexander Usyk as well, because uh, all this is the first time in uh, boxing history that all four belts are on the line for the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. It is a fight that should not be missed because it is record-breaking and, and epochal stuff. Still talking about heavyweight boxing, uh, this man has just been a social media sensation. I'm talking about Ty uh, Joseph Parker, New Zealand heavyweight. Uh, of course, he's enjoying a great run of form. Everybody remembers that video of his where he was calling out his old uh, dance partner, Dillian White. Hilarious stuff. Now he's still at it again. This time, he's calling out Anthony Joshua for a rematch as another sing along. Just take a listen to this man. He's he's having fun while uh, enjoying it the be his best time uh, as, uh, as a major heavyweight. I'm gonna paint you by
Welcome back. It's still watching Game On. Now, taking over from Babatunde Koike, of course, he has to settle some emergency beyond us. But, of course, you're in good hands. The show must go on. You can follow, like, our social media platform showing on your screen. And we're still talking interesting things in the world of sport here. I will be going to the Major Soccer League and, uh, of course, and the U.S. Women's um, Domestic League, the NWSL. We've heard a lot about the Major Soccer League and even with the rival of <laughs> Lionel Messi went into bonkers. Everybody wanted to watch the league on the stand, football around there. We've heard of Nigerians also who have um, made their way to the Major Soccer League and also the NWSL, of course, um, looking at the likes of Atisato Shuala, Super Falcon striker, who now plays for Bay FC. Of course, um, she would have been um, one of Africa's biggest signing over there until Rachel Kudananji came into the picture. But we have a number of um, Super Falcons players who applied the trade in the NWSL. Of course, um, um, Houston Dash, the likes of Michelle Alouzi, also applies her trade over there. I still got uh, Onyeuchi in the studio, and I know um, since the arrival of um, the likes of um, Asato Shuala in the NWSL, I thought there would be a big boost and Nigerians would get interest uh, at watching the, the women play over there in the United States. Yeah, naturally. Um, I think the Nigerian fans usually gravi gravitate towards, um, you know, um, countries, you know, or leagues where the superstars, mm. you know, like Asato Shuala is a superstar mm. in every search of an imagination. And, um, um, everybody will be following the, 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 the women's soccer league. Um, like you said, Lionel Messi also, you know, joined the MLS. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's this kind of rivalry between him and Ronaldo. And mm. everybody thought he was going to go to Saudi Arabia to give uh, Ronaldo a run for his money, but uh, he opted for the MLS. But when Zlatan was playing the MLS, was that so much interest, like when Lionel Messi had gone there? No, obviously not. You hmm. know, they, they are not in the same level. Like, I mean, take nothing away from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He's a superstar. He's a great player. A striker of um, you know mean repute. But Lionel Messi is the best player. You know, mm. he's, he, 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 him and Cristiano Ronaldo are okay. two of the best in the world. So wherever they go, you know, people will always you know follow them. There. Okay. The supporters you know, all over the world will always argue who is the best, and you know this kind of uh, traffic usually follows them. To wherever they go all right let's see if uh, our guest right now feels the same way we've got joining us um, uh, on the show today sam mbonu he's a publisher with asn sport um, tv.net thank you so much sam for joining us on the show today Thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you so much platform. for your patience. Of course, you've been of course, waiting over there to talk with us on In The Game. Uh, I, I love the fact that Nigerians are also getting interest in this uh, NWSL, the Major Soccer League. Of course, I remember Sanders where Obafemi uh, Martins also applied his trade. How do we, how does this open a new vista for uh, Nigerian players who want to apply their trade in the MLS or the NWSL? Thank you very much for having me on, Gimon. Um, since the uh, Major League Soccer started um, over 25 years ago, a lot of players from different regions, you know, flocks to the league. You know, prior now, they see the league as a, as a retirement league. We have players, superstars in their twilight who come to the MLS and, you know, see the rest of their career. But it's not the same now. MLS has grown. Soccer, is the third most um, supported or follow sports here in the U.S. after the NFL and the NBA. And there is more room for growth when you look at the fact that this region will be hosting the World Cup and the next World Cup. That gives it room, you know, for FIFA, you know, to invest in the development of the game here. So when you look at the, 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 the MLS, there is no way you can write the success stories of this league without Nigerian and African players. For example, the third highest uh, um, scorer in this league all time is from Syria alone. Talking about Kai Kamara, 144 um, goals, and he had played for 11 MLS clubs. This is a legend of the league. If this guy is an American, if this guy happens to play in the Premier League and he's, and he's British, he'll be celebrated. But no one is celebrating him to where he needs to, looking at his level of achievement. Come to Houston Dynamo. You know, they have a couple of African players. I mean, Basti from Morocco. They have Ali Ibrahim, former flying Eagles of Nigerian player. You know, four goals this season, 
uh, you know, on five matches, from five matches, I beg your pardon. When you go to 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 clubs uh, um, like LAFC, LA Galaxy, uh, Columbus Crew, they all have African players. Sporting Kansas, William Agada, Nigerian. Go to Minnesota, Tani Uluwache, Nigerian. So there is no club here in the MLS that you will look at their roster and then will not ring a bell. That shows, you know, how inclusive, you know, how open this league is in embracing a lot of soccer projects from all over the country. Talk about the NWSL mm. since 2012 when it started. A lot of female superstars of Grizzly League. Um, we look at the U.S. women national team. The, the cream de la cream of their players played their trade here. Before um, Oshola came to this league, we have um, Michelle Alonso who played for, for the Houston Dash. We have uh, Nomono who played for the Gotham City FC. We have um, Uchenna Kano for racing Louisville. You know, so it has given Nigerian uh, um, soccer players, both male and female, the opportunity for them to explore their talent apart from going to Europe or going to other parts of Asia. So MLS and WSL, this is, will be the next big thing in the next um, decade. All right, Uchi, you've got a question. Yeah, Sam, how are you doing? I'm doing, what? how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing, I'm fine. Then. You know, after the US and the World Cup, um, you know. Recording we, in progress. Well, we, we, that we experienced um, a progressive growth for the United States as far as football is concerned. Mm. And I want to ask, what have they done between 94 when they hosted the World Cup and now, you know, to ensure that um, football be becomes so popular as basketball, mm. as NFL, mm. and other sports that used to be more popular than football? Um, when you look at the, the MLS, um, immediately after the, the US 94 World Cup, I think that gave back to you know the MLS, real MLS we are seeing right now. And prior to then, soccer, the soccer gospel hasn't really been propagated the right way in a mm. Billy Graham style, just the way it is right now. Almost all the MLS clubs have their stadium. Almost. And when you look at uh, um, MLS, a lot of investors to get uh, an expansion um, license runs into millions and billions of dollars. So the development, the focus from the world body FIFA is now in this region. That's why you know the three countries of Mexico, Canada, and USA were able to win that joint bid. Mm -hmm. So soccer has grown here, and it is the third most followed sports uh, behind the NFL and the NBA. And I think because the fact that there's still room for growth, you know, U.S. is very, very vast in terms of landmass. There are even states, there are even regions that don't have soccer teams. And, and I know that, you know, with time, soccer will arrive in those cities big time. So this is, you know, the room that, that give, you know, this is the, 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 the room that gives sports chance to grow. Unlike the NFL, they are not accepting as passion teams again. Only the teams that they have that are already there, season in, season out. But in the MLS, before you know it, we'll go to, we'll have a new expansion team in the league that shows growth and development. For the NWSL, you know, they are also growing. Bay City FC is an expansion to the new team. You know, and even in that Bay City in California, they have more than one team. That shows that California alone, they have up to four teams, both in the MLS and the NWSL. NJ City FC, Bay FC, LAFC, LA Galaxy, and San Jose. Just one state have five professional soccer teams. Mm. Can you beat that, that kind of uh, um, staggering um, number that of fans that will go to stadium week in, week out, weekends, midweek to watch games? So this shows that the game is really growing here in the US. And a lot of immigrants, those from the Latin American countries, those from Africa, those that come from a country where soccer is the number one sport are majorly the ones embracing this game. And when we look at the U.S. men national team set up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, team where Liberian playing for the U.S. men national team. He could have opted to play for Liberia. But when you look at the inclusivity, you know, how they open the national team to embrace other talent that, you know, have risen here in the U.S., that gives them room. Dalit Nabe from Liberia played for U.S. men national team, even though he was born in Liberia. So there is room for this sport to grow in this region.
All right, we cannot wait for the sport to grow. I remember that the U.S. have always been known to uh, be so good with basketball. That's why we have the NBA. But now, football taking center stage in the U.S. Oh, great conversation there. Time that our friend Sam will have to call it a wrap on the conversation. But thank you so much for sharing a wealth of knowledge concerning this. I'm very sure we'll connect with you some other time to go deeper in this conversation. We have been speaking to Simon Bourne, who is the publisher for ASN Sport um, TV. The Nets joining us all the way from Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for joining us on In the Game today. Game on, I beg your pardon today. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, gee, we've heard a lot, and I'm hoping I can't wait till the time when the MLS will be able to get and then struggle with the, like, um, the likes of the English Premier League. Uh, the Spanish La Liga, the Turkish League. Maybe at that time when players will get there, will get contracts there, will not be called players who want to just go retire. Yeah, I think so. I, I think they're on the right tr on the right track, really. Mm. Mm. Um, like you said, like Sam said, when they started, it was like um, you know a league for players in the twilight of their careers. Yeah. Um, you know, players who felt that um, uh, you know they had just one or two years to go and they needed you know more money you know, to show up whatever they have already. So, mm. But uh, it's gradually evolving and, um, you know, it takes time. Mm. It takes a lot of, um, you know, processes. It takes a lot of investments and it just takes one player, like mm. what Lionel Messi has done, yes. you know, to begin to attract. Just lot, like Saudi Arabia, the Pro League, you saw the attention absolutely. that got more players all absolutely. the way from the English Premier League uh, down you know, there. Those leagues are not, uh, they are very tough. Yes. They are not as easy as, uh, you know, being speculated. Mm. You, you have to work after all, uh, Karim Benzema is struggling in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You know, he's <laughs> blaming all his teammates. You mm. know, he had issues. Having with the issues with his coach. I, I, absolutely. So it's not easy because when they pay a lot of money, mm. they expect you to. Yes. You know, you, know, you know, to play as much as you earn. You know. All right. Okay, then. Moving away from there, we'll tell you that the action is still continuous for the UEFA Champions League, the quarterfinal. At the moment, let's see what it's looking like right now. Of course, we have Atletico Madrid. Was leading that 2 1 against Borussia Dortmund. The German side needs to step up their game there. Paris Saint Germain is a five goal thriller over there. We're still waiting for more goals to come in. But Barcelona take the lead here for the UEFA Champions League that is ongoing as we speak. All right, um, expected for the Europa League. Let's remind you that Bayern Leverkusen will be up against West Ham. Benfica will take on Marseille. Liverpool will take on Atalanta for the quarterfinal fixture. And AC Milan will see AC Roma. AS Roma, I beg your pardon. The Europa Conference League will have Olympiacos against Fenerbahce. Uh, Victoria Pleasant against Fiorentina. Aston Villa will take on Lille. And Club Brugge against Pauk Athens. All right, it's been an interesting conversation here on Game On, a good show so far. And I've uh, been talking to Onyeuchi over here, a great conversation. Tunde could not just finish the show with us, but mm. the show must go on, as they say. Yeah, always a pleasure. Tunde has had to be substituted. Yes. You know, it happens once in a while. Am I a good sub? Yeah, <laughs> a powerful super sub. sub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before we go, I must tell you something interesting in the world of sport. This was open in 1992 Chester City Devil Stadium is probably the only stadium in the United Kingdom built in two countries the main stand was built on the east side of the ground so that the club offices can be sited on the English side of the border this allows the club to remain as member of the English FA but as soon as anyone steps over the touch line there are uh, they are in Wales so they're in uh, the, 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 the stadium here is in two borders there. But as soon as anyone steps over the touchline, of course, they'll be in Wales. So just weird, so clear that the pitch is entirely within Wales. However, the stadium car park, main entrance, same offices, and some personal dress are in England. So if you want to have a bypass to Wales, you can go through the stadium over here. Interesting one, you know, Gino. Yeah, very interesting. It's like using one stone to kill two beds. I'm telling you, <laughs> and this is a good stone. Killing two beds as we speak. All right, interesting conversation. You can catch up more. Get to follow like our social media platforms at New Central TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Engage the hashtag. Game on to join the conversation. I am Onyechi Obaru. Thank you for being there.